وربي سبحانه وتعالى يقول أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا بارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم علمنا بما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم ارزقنا الإخلاص في العلم والقول والعمل اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على طاعتك ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب نعم It's been a long time since we've been in this classroom huh? Almost a month Inshallah, today is our last day for our final next week. And we'll try to do a few suwar if possible. And then move on to Al Arbain or Al Arbain and Nawawiyah. Inshallah, Tafadal Bikiraati Surati Al Bumaza. Naam. Bismillah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سورة الهمزة سورة الهمزة is a مكي سورة سورة الهمزة is a مكي سورة as narrated by Ibn Mardawi in his book by way of Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما who said that this سورة is a مكي سورة وَلَا أَعْلَمُ لَهُ خِلَافًا And I do not know of any difference of opinion between the scholars regarding this. That Surah Al-Humazah is a Makki Surah. And it is the 32nd Surah to ever be revealed. Surah number what? 32. It came down before Surah Al-Mursalat and after Surah Al-Qiyamah. It came down before Surah Al-Mursalat and after Surah Al-Qiyamah. It has nine verses. 30 words and 130 letters. Nine verses, 30 words and 130 letters. Why are we mentioning these statistics? Who can remind me? Why do we mention these statistics at the beginning of every surah? And what is its importance? It's just numbers. Who can tell me? Why do we mention all of these stats and these numbers? Nobody knows? We mentioned this how many times? Multiple times. Yes. Yes, nine verses, 30 words, and 130 letters. When you love something, what do you do? You learn everything about it. Every single thing, you know. And we, make it, we gave an example of sports. All right? You memorize unnecessary stats for no reason. He averages 3.3 personal fouls a game. What does that matter? Plays 37.8 minutes a game. Oh, why? Because you love it so much. Same thing goes for the Quran. We gotta memorize the statistics of the Quran. Taban, it is not. It's not as important. Drink with the right hand, inshallah. The Prophet he says in the Hadith narrated by Imam Muslim, Hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah, لا تأكلوا بالشمال. فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَأْكُلُ بِالشِّمَالِ Do not eat with your left hand. But verily the shaitan eats with his left hand. The majority of the scholars they say it's dislike to eat with your left hand. And they also say drink it. And some scholars they say, and it's a narration, عند الإمام أحمد, and it is the ظاهري madhab, it is haram to drink with your left hand. So according to this madhab, you have just committed a sin. Right? So we always should drink with our what? With our right hand. Now, 
uh, and they say this is general for anything regarding adab. Anything regarding what? Adab, you should always, anything that is nice and good, you should always do with your right hand. And anything that is bad, you should always do it with your what? With your left hand. Naam. 130 letters. 130 letters. Naam. 130 letters. 30 words and 130 letters. Naam. It is known as Surat Al Humaza. And it is also known as Surat Waylul Li Kulli Humaza. As Imam Al Bukhari, Rahimahullah, he uh, titled it in his As Sahih. And Al Fayruz Al Abadi, he mentions that one of the names of Surat Al Humaza is Surat Al Hutama. And that is because Al Hutama is one of the 30 words mentioned. One of the 30 words mentioned in Surat Al Humaza. Right? How many times is Al-Hutama mentioned in Surah Al-Humaza? Twice, right? So that means two of the 30 words, not just one. Two of the 30 words, right? Now, and the reason why this Surah was put after Surah Al-Asr, we can say because of two reasons. One, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, after mentioning that all of mankind is in loss, he mentions what puts a person in loss. And that is Al-Humaza and Al-Lumaza. And the meaning of those, these two words will come, inshaAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say in Surah Al-Asr? Inna al-insana lafi khusr. And he mentions, uh, after, the, after that he mentions the exceptions. Right after, the Surah after, he mentions those who are in loss. Because of Al-Humaza and Al-Lumaza. Another reason that is mentioned, all right, that is mentioned by the Mufassirin, that this surah was put right after Surah Al Asr in terms of the order, is because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He mentions some of the characteristics of the people of misguidance, of the people of dalal, of the people of what, of misguidance. After telling us that everybody will be what misguided, He tells us some of these characteristics, and both are very similar. Both are very what? Are very similar. And we mentioned that the relations between the first verse and the last verse is known as Al Munasabat. Ilm al what? Munasabat. And there are books written. Why is, uh, what is the relationship between the last verse of Al Baqarah and the first verse of Surah Ali Imran? Why is, what's the relation? Right? The same thing goes here. Inshallah, we'll try to mention it before and, every, before and after every surah. No, this is called ilm al-munasabah. Although ilm al-munasabah, none of it is really narrated. This is all mahd, ishtihad mahd. Ishtihad mahd meaning, this is all some of the mufassiri, something that the mufassirin came up with. Alright, they did ishtihad. It's not something that is qala Allah, qala Rasul, that is mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the messenger. No. He says here, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, waylun li kulli humazatin lumazah. Now, we previously took an usul al-tafsir, Something called Al Asma Al Mushtaraka. And that is the names that have two two different meanings, right? And we mentioned that one of the words in the Quran that have two meanings is Wayl. Who can remind me the two meanings of Wayl? Who can remind me of the two meanings of Wayl? The two meanings of Wayl, yes. What's that? Woo unto you, that's one. And number two? What is the second one? The second one. Woo unto you is the first one. What is the second meaning? Who give me the second meaning? They say, Afatul ilmi nisyan. Afatul ilmi and nisyan. The things that destroys your ilm is what? Is nisyan, when you forget. You know, a lot of people they study. But how come only a number of people become scholars? Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he used to have 5,000 students. 4,500 were from the masses. 500 were serious students of knowledge. They used to write. And from these 500, only a number became scholars. Why is that? It is because they forget. The scholars they don't forget and the rest they forget. 
And that is why Al Qama, when he was asked on how he became a scholar and all of his friends, they became, they were still average, he said, I used to repeat, I used to repeat, and I used to review, so I never forgot. But my peers, they used to listen, they used to study, and they never used to what? Review. Al Muraja'a, review, is more important than Al Hif. Reviewing is more important than memorizing. Reviewing is more important than what? Coming to class. Although this is important, but if you compare both, which one's more important? Review. وَرَأْسُ الْمَالِ مُقَدَّمٌ عَلَى الْرِبْحِ Golden qa'i, the golden principle when it comes to business, right? Your capital takes precedence over profit, right or wrong? Alright? If you're losing out on your capital, how are you going to look after the profit? <laughs> That doesn't make any sense, right? So you always review everything that you have taken. Now, we mentioned that the second meaning of wail is that it is a valley in Jahannam. It is a valley in Jahannam that certain people will be thrown into. And only two surahs in the Quran start off with wail. And both surahs are in the last juz. That is wailul lil mutafifin and wailul li kulli humazati lumaza. Waylul Mutafifin discusses the wealth of people. And Waylul Likulli Humazati Lumazat discusses the honor of people. Two things that you gotta watch out for. Al Muslimi Ala al Muslimi Haramun. Remember that hadith we took? Haramun Demuhu Amaluhu Irdu. Three things that are haram for a Muslim. His blood, his honor, and his wealth. You know his blood is kind of understood. People only an evil person would kill somebody. But when it comes to the wealth of people, and when it comes to the honor of people, it is as if people are mutasahid, they, they, they overlook it, all right? Especially honor, especially what? Honor. Wealth, yani Allah musta'ad, it does exist. But honor, some of us practice it every single day, ruin the honors of others, Allah musta'ad. Even though it may be very simple to you, you might make a joke here and there, and it's simple to you, but you're in the honor of another person. Here he says, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةِ الْلُمَزَةِ Al-humaza and al lumaza are two forms of dishonoring a person. al humaza is when you dishonor a person based uh, with an action, يعني based on an action. Right? And al lumaza is when you dishonor a person based on speech. So when you dishonor somebody with your actions, physically. Right? Physically. That is called al humaza Hamazin mashain. Continue it. Binabim. Alright? Hamazin mashain binabim. Hamaz, he's mocking others with what? Physically. Alright? Al Hams and Al Lams and uh, Al Nabs. Al Nabs. Who can tell me where in the Quran is Al Nabs? Al Nabs and Al Lams are very similar. And Al Ghams. Al Ghams and Al Nabs are both mentioned in the Quran. All of these different words basically mean to mock. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say in Surah Al-Hujarat? He said, وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ right, Do not call other people what? Names. This is An-Nabz. Alright? And Al-Ghamz. يَتَغَامَزُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Mutaffifin. You know, يَتَغَامَزُونَ Ghamz means to wink at a person. Now, when you wink at a person, that's one thing. But when you wink in a mocking form, that's called Al-Ghamz. Right? Or using an ishara, using sign sign language. Alright? And the reason reason why this surah came down, especially this verse, is because a number of the mushrikeen they used to mock the Prophet. Alright? They used to mock the Prophet. From them, Al As ibn Wa'il. Who is Al As ibn Wa'il? Huh? Yes? Who is Amr ibn al ibn al Wa'il? He's father of Amr. He's a he's a chief of the branch of the faith. Ah. 
who is Aas ibn al-Wail. He's the grandfather of Abdullah ibn Amr and the father of Amr ibn al-Aas. Amr ibn al-Aas, that's his father. Al-Aas ibn Wail, the chief of Bani Sahm. The chief of Bani Sahm. And also it is said that Umayyah bin Khalaf used to used to uh, mock the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So this verse came down. It is also said that Ubay ibn Khalaf, there's two different men. Umayyah bin Khalaf, the famous Qurashi chief, and Ubay bin Khalaf. Not Ubay bin Ka'b, Ubay bin what? Bin Khalaf. Alright? It is also said that Jamil ibn Amir al-Jumahi, who's from the leader of the tribe of Jumah, used to also mock the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And all of these narrations have been narrated. And that is why this verse came down. Alright? What did they used to call the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet ﷺ, his name is Muhammad. They tested it and they called him Mudhammam. Muhammad means the praised one. Mudhammam means the what? Huh? What does is, what is Mudhammam mean? Huh? The opposite of the praised one. What, what would be the opposite of praise? Huh? The dishonored one, right? It reminds me of a story, although they say the story is uh, the chain of narration of it is weak. And that is when Sa'id ibn Jubayr radiallahu he revolted against Al-Hajjaj. He, he joined the revolution against the famous dictator Al-Hajjaj. And then he, after Al-Hajjaj, you know, uh, broke up the revolution, Sa'id ibn Jubayr, who was one of the top tabi'een, he ran away. They say he was running away for 11 years. Until one day he couldn't handle it, he just went to Mecca. He's like, I can't run away anymore. He was caught in Mecca by the governor of the Hijaz and then he was sent chained up to Al-Hajjaj in Iraq. The Iraq was very, uh, the Hijaz was very happy. As soon as he walked in, he asked him, what is your name? Sa'id ibn Jubayr, he replied by saying, my name is Sa'id ibn Jubayr. Al-Hajjaj replied by saying, la, you are not Sa'id ibn Jubayr, rather you are Shaqi ibn Kusayr. And what is Shaqi ibn Kusayr? The opposite. Sa'id means the happy one. Shaqi means the wretched one. Literally the exact opposite, the antonym. And Jubayr means somebody who's what? Strong and has some strength. And Kusayr means somebody who's what? Who's weak. Literally the opposite. What is Hajjaj doing Sa'id ibn Jubayr right now? He's mocking him, right? And what is this called in the Arabic language when you mock with your tongue? What is this called? Huh? It's called Al-Lamz or Al-Lumazah. What time did they pray Asr here? Huh? What time did they pray Asr here? 5.15, that was a month ago. Did they still pray 5.15? Can somebody go check for us? Salah uh, al Now. Uh, we were saying that uh, a, a, a number of the mushrikeen were mocking the Prophet وسلم, and that is why this verse came down. Those who gather money and count it. Subhanallah. Those who gather money and what do they do? Count it. 1,000, 2,000, 10 Gs, 20 Gs. Six figures, millionaires, billionaires, trillionaires, they count it. They take a picture of their what? How much money, you know, how much money they have in their account and they post it everywhere. Or what is their check? They gather their money and they count it. يحسب أن ماله أخلده يحسب Alright? حسب يحسب يحسب means he thinks, he believes. أَنَّ مَا لَهُ أَخْلَدَهُ That his money will keep him That his money will make him immortal And keep him for eternity And he'll stay alive That's what people think, right? What do people say? What is the motto of people nowadays? Get rich or die? Try it Right? That's what people say, right? Let me rack up some G's Or some nuggets Alright? That's what they say as if when they get money that they'll be what? On top of the world and that money will save them. Right? And they do not know the, the, the history of, or the story of Qarun and what happened to him. He had all kinds of money. What happened to him? What happened to Fir'aun? He had all kinds of money. 
All right, and so on and so forth. There's so many different examples. But that's how people act. They act arrogant, they walk around, they think they're all that, right? Because they believe that their money will keep it for eternity. يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَالَهُ أَخْلَدَهُ Oh, miskeen human being. Oh, you poor one that is made out of sand and water. You're nothing. You're barely seven feet tall, right? We live in the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. You're a tiny, tiny point. What are you? And just because you got some what? A bunch of paper money, all right? You think you're all that. يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَالَهُ أَخْلَدَهُ The people that are fooled by money, the masakeen. They are what? They are indeed the masakeen. And the ones that are not fooled by money, even though they are masakeen, they're not masakeen. The true masakeen are those who what? Who have money and think that money will keep them what? Will keep them alive. Obviously, they don't, they don't believe that they're immortal, but they act like they're immortal. They're sinning left and right as if they'll never be held accountable. Alright? يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَالَهُ أَخْلَدَهُ Notice how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He discusses the honor of a person in the first verse and in the second verse right after it, what is He talking about? He's discussing the wealth of a person. The connection between honor and what? And money, and wealth. See the connection? In the hadith, we mentioned hadith, الْمُسْلِمُ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ حَرَامٌ دَمُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَعِرْضُهُ and we mentioned that the only two surahs that start off with the word wayla, one is discussing money and the other one is discussing honor. And in the surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses honor, right after he discusses what? Money. See, look at the connection between money and, and honor. Kalla. <laughs> what did we say about kalla in usul al-tafsir? Who can remind me? What did we say about kalla? There's something interesting regarding the word kalla. Ayyuha zubayriyu. Can you tell me what kalla is? Excellent. Ahsant ayyuha zubayri. Every single time you see the word kalla, it is mentioned where? It is a Meccan surah. Alright? Generally speaking, there's a couple times where there's khilaf. But usually if you see the word kalla in a surah, automatically that surah is what? Is Makki. It's mentioned 33 times in the Quran. Kalla. Alright? Now, Kalla. No. Yani this is not the case. La yunbadhanna fil hutamah. That person who thinks that they're immortal, thinks that they'll be living forever, either by their belief or by their actions. And most of the time is due to their actions. لَيُمْبَذَنَّ They will be thrown in الْحُطَمَةِ We mentioned that الْحُطَمَةِ is what? What do we mention about الْحُطَمَةِ? We said that الْحُطَمَةِ is one of, these, one of the names of this surah as mentioned by الْفَيْرُوزِ أَبَادِي نعم كَلَّا لَيُمْبَذَنَّ فِي الْحُطَمَةِ They will be thrown into الْحُطَمَةِ What is الْحُطَمَةِ? Who can tell me what الْحُطَمَةِ is? Who can tell me what al-hutam is? Naam. It is one of the what? It is one of the names of hellfire. Al-hutama is one of the names of hellfire. How did you know? Context clues. Context clues, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he say? Two verses later. No, you're not a genius. You just looked at the two verses later, huh? <laughs> oh, what is al-hutama? The same question I asked, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us. Right? The importance of as siyaq The importance of what? as siyaq Knowing the context in which the verse or the word comes in is really, really important. Sometimes you have a word, you know its meaning, you put it in a different context, especially the Arabic language, it has a total different meaning. Right? You have a word that has multiple meanings, you don't know which ones, you just have to look at the context. You don't know what it's going to mean. You have a verse, you look at it by itself, it has one meaning. You put it together with the verses before and after it, right? It gives it a whole different meaning. That is why one of the scholars, he said, 
He said, As-siyaqu tubayyinul mujmalat. Alright? Tubayyin al-mujmalat. It clarifies the mujmal. And we, we took an usul al-tafsir that al-mujmal is a word that has what? A word that can go both ways. It has two meanings. Alright? Or is not understandable. It's not something that is understood. It's not, yani when you look at it, you can't understand it right away. Alright? As-siyaq, the context clarifies it. وَتُرَجِّحُ الْمُحْتَمَلَاتِ تُرَجِّحُ الْمُحْتَمَلَاتِ Alright, it has different, it has different ways of looking at it, but one of them looks to be closer. وَتُقَرِّرُ الْوَاضِحَاتِ And it affirms things that are clear cuts. Siyaq is very important. And we gave an example of Usul Tafsir of the ayah, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا عَسْعَسْ You guys remember? وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا عَسْعَسْ We mentioned that عَسْعَسْ in the Arabic language has two meanings. And that is when the night starts and when the night what? When the night ends. When the night is young and when the night is old, if you want to call it. Alright? And we said that the correct opinion here, although as, as has both meanings, when we look at the context, it is referring to when the night ends. Because what is the verse right after it? وَالصُّبْحِ إِذَا تَنَفَّسْ And the morning when it what? When it breathes. Literally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the words tanafas. Tanafas means what? When it breathes. Yani when it comes out. So, does the sun come out or when does, does the morning come out when the night is young? Or does it come out when the night is what? Is old. It comes out when the morning comes out when the night is old. I'll give you guys another example of the siyaq. And that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the, in the Quran, in Surah Al-Muddathir, He said, وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَهِّرْ وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَهِّرْ What does this mean in the Arabic language? وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَهِّرْ Thiyab means what? Thiyab means clothes. Tahir means what? Purify your clothes. You look at this verse by itself, what does it mean? Purify your clothes. Yeah, and your clothes are what? Tahir. What if I tell you that the scholars have eight different opinions regarding the meaning of this verse? <laughs> eight different opinions. How can they differ in something that is so clear? Thiyab is clothes. And tahir means what? Purify. We say the reason why they differed is because of the context that it came in. What is the ayah before with yabaka fa tahir? Huh? No, that's two ayahs before. Wa rabbaka fa kabbir. And your Lord, what do you do? Right? Your Lord, you make him great. You glorify him. Wa thiyabaka fa tahir. Wa rujza fa Okay, we're, we're, we're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we go to clothes. Then we go back to idols. There's something wrong here, okay? There's something wrong here. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari rahimahullah, he mentions in his tafsir that the overwhelming majority of the salaf, majority of the salaf, they say that this verse is not referring to your clothes. Rather, it is referring to what is in your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying here, purify your clothes. He's saying here, purify your heart. And the reason for this is because of the context, because of the, of the siyaq. The verse, وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ is talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how you should what? Make Him great. وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَاهِرْ What is it talking about? Your, your faith, your iman. وَالرُّجْزَ فَهْجُرْ is talking about what? Your iman as well. Don't believe in these, in these idols. Migrate from the worship of these idols. And that is why it is very important to know a siyaq. A is very important. Right? And that is the problem with Islamophobes. They don't know anything about siyaq. They don't know nothing about context. They take all of these different ayat and they what? They misinterpret it. المشركين, right? Right? They don't even know where this con where what ayah, what context the ayah coming from. Alright? They take different verses and then they make it. And when you think about it, if you're a jahil, if you're ignorant, you look at some of their arguments, it makes sense. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that? You're right. But they fail to realize that Arabic language is different from any other language. 
Every language context can change everything, make everything upside down. Right? I can take the ayah as we mentioned this many times. Fawailul lil musalli. Wu unto those who pray. You can take that ayah, right? Somebody tells you to pray? No, I'm not going to pray. Fawailul lil musalli. I'm not trying to be a hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that there will be a valley in hellfire for those who pray. What's going to happen? We have problems here, right? This person, they took this verse out of its context. Alright? No. We say especially in the Arabic language. We say especially in the Arabic language. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْحُطَمَةِ نَارُ اللَّهِ الْمُوْقَدَةِ The fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't just say nar. He said the... And he did not say my nar. He said the nar of Allah. يعني in third person. Right? The nar of Allah. That, that shows this is... This is what? This is something that is dangerous. The fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al muqada that is lit with fire, that is ready to eat you and to burn you, but you're not going to die. Torture is worse than death. May Allah save us from hellfire. Qulu ameen. Naam. Allati tattali'u ala al afidah. التي تطلع على الأفئدة. That fire will get to your what? To your body and your skin and even your heart. الأفئدة is جمع فؤاد is the plural of the word فؤاد and فؤاد means what your heart. It will reach your what? Your body and reach your skin. Every single part of your skin. May Allah save us from the hellfire. إنها عليه مصدة. The doors of hellfire would be closed on them. There's not going to be four doors that you can escape. You think you have a door to escape from? There's no escaping this. You're in hellfire, you're in hellfire. Allah Musta'an. You know how some people, they always find a way out of everything. Every situation, they, they find a way out. There's no way out on that day. Fi amadin mumaddadah. Fi amadin mumaddadah. They are in what? Levels of fire it's not just a normal tiny fire levels of fire that are widespread mumaddad means something that is what widespread and that is why they say the word that's where the word med comes from you know in tajweed they say med because you what you spread it widely wassama right you spread it that is why they say uh, med you know this cloth right here you spread it all right and that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said about the earth that is what memdudah that is what it's spread same thing for the hellfire it is spread okay and you cannot escape from it may Allah save us from the hellfire so this surah in general is talking about two main concepts all right two main concepts the first is the honor of others watch your tongue don't mock others, even if it's something very small. All right, even if it's something very small, if they're going to be offended by it. Don't, don't say anything. All right, even if it's just, a, even if it's a nickname, even if it's a what nickname? They give an exception. The scholars they give an exception. They say if the nickname is too widespread. They say if the nickname is too widespread, that that's the only name that he's known for. Then, then it's an exception. But widespread, as in what? For the bigger maslaha. Now, I'll give you guys an example from the past. There was a narrator. He's an imam by the name of Ismail ibn Uliya. Ismail ibn Uliya, big time imam in hadith, and he's a narrator. Uliya is his mother's name. Uliya is his mother's name. Imagine you being called by your mother's name instead of your father's name, your mother's name. Just imagine. That was Ibn Uliya for you. And he hated it, he disliked it. But you open up every single hadith book that ever discussing narrators, they call him Ibn Uliya. And he said, Wallahi, I promise hellfire for those who call me Ibn Uliya. May Allah save us from hellfire. Qul ameen. Alright. Al-Dhahabi rahimahullah, he mentions that this is just too widespread. We, this is how you're known. Right? When, when we see your name, Okay, if we call you by your father's name, is anybody going to recognize you? Nobody's going to recognize you. But when we see your name, we have to know your what? We have to know uh, this narrator, whether they're uh, reliable, whether they're not reliable. And this is what you're known by. 
So what do we do here? It's, it's too late, it's too widespread. Right? Naam, if you know the person personally and he tells you, don't call me by this, call me by this, then you call him by that. Alright? But sometimes when you want to describe a person, that's the only way to describe him. There's no other way. His real name is not known. Some people, their real name are not known. They're just not known. Alright? And you want to describe him or something. Yani, for example, in court, and this person must attend. And the only way to describe it is using this thing. This is a one exception. Other than that, you're not allowed to call anybody by a name. وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ And the same goes for, you know, talking about others. Wallahi, this is a, something that we're plagued with. Always talking about others. And especially talking about others in evil. All right, talking about their shortcomings, talking about their mistakes, talking about their this, their that. Allah this is a problem. You backbiting others all the time. You gossip with others all the time. There's a golden qaida that Imam Shafi'i puts. He says, Man nammalak, namma alayk. Whoever gossips to you, whoever brings information to you, will say information about you. It's ma'roof. Whoever tells you information is going to tell information about you. So look at your friends. Every single person, look at your friends. And count them. If they're here, if they're outside the building, try to see if they tell you information about others. If they tell you a lot of information about others, especially bad information, if you're praising the other person, that's a different story. But we're talking about what? Their shortcomings and their mistakes. Then do not what? Don't befriend them. Cut them off slowly but surely. Not one time because you're going to make it obvious. Slowly but surely. Because they're going to tell information about you. They're going to say your mistakes and your shortcomings. Right? The second is the wealth of people. The right? The wealth of people. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He discusses it extensively in Wail al mutaffifin But here, He is saying, do not be fooled by your what? By money and by your wealth. Don't think you're all that. Do not think you're all that. Humble yourself. For you are just a, at the end of the day, a daughter of Eve or son of Adam. Alright? Money doesn't make people. What makes people? What makes people? Huh? What makes people? What's in your heart? What makes people is taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. If there was anybody to boast, it would be the muttaqeen. But the muttaqeen don't boast. Because the taqwa, from taqwa is to not boast. From taqwa is to be, is to be humble. What time is it? 5.28? There's two minutes. Inshallah, we'll stop there and we will discuss Surah al feed the Surah of the Elephants. You know, they say, uh, they say uh, the brother became Muslim and the first prayer he was praying was, it was Maghrib and the Imam was leading Surah Al-Baqarah so you know Surah Al-Baqarah is kind of long so Imam kind of made it long and uh, after the prayer the, the, the brother the new Muslim he asked one of the guys he said what chapter was reading that was a long chapter he said that was the chapter of the cow, Surah Al-Baqarah. Alright. Isha came in and before the prayer started, he went into the Imam. He asked the Imam, hey Imam, what, what chapter are you gonna read? He said, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna read the chapter of the elephant. He said, if the chapter of the cow was that long, imagine the chapter of the elephant. I'm out of here, man. And he left. He prayed at home. The day he come back. Wassallahu alaihi wasallam. Barakallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.